Um, so just a little word about the Nike Foundation, um, for those of you who don't know, we are actually singularly focused on empowering girls in poverty. That is all we do. That is what we talk about all day at work, that is what we talk to the world about, that's what we think about, that's what we invest in. Um, we believe that as a small foundation, the greatest untapped opportunity in front of us are girls. And the reason why we believe this so passionately actually has to uh, do with the question that is posed on this panel, what is the greatest challenge that girls face? And uh, we believe that the greatest challenge is uh, quite simply and quite mistakenly that they are undervalued. Uh, we've observed uh, really what I'll call an irrational, massive, and devastating, devastating distortion in the way that the world perceives and values girls. Uh, this distortion is coupled with uh, an incredible myopia which focuses on just near-term results and misses the opportunity to perceive girls as an incredible source of near-term and long-term impact. So when the world's vision is so distorted and so nearsighted, the miscalculation that happens uh, results in um, really uh, the continued impover uh, impoverishment of girls. And uh, this, this is how that mis miscalculation actually plays out in her life. So the first way it plays out is when she's born. When a girl is born, um, far too often families groan in despair. Instead of shouting out for joy, that a daughter has been born into the world. They look at her as a burden and as a liability. Investing in her education, in her health, in her economic prospects uh, seems pointless because she's going to be married off early and become part of her husband's family. So instead, the, um, the, the mode of operation is to just extract as much short-term value out of her as possible, instead of investing or extracting value from her. Uh, she becomes bearer of the chore burdens in the house. She's pulled out of school uh, to take care of younger siblings. She is uh, the family's health insurance policy. When things go wrong, she's the one that has to take care of the family. So there's this massive disinvestment that happens in girls. In the worst form of undervaluing, Girls, we see what's happening in parts of um, India and China where there's tremendous sex um, um, related infanticide. So we've got regions where the ratio of girls to boys is 900 to 1,000. That kind of gender imbalance is a recipe for social unrest and future violence. It's a real problem for the world. Uh, the second way that it manifests is just think about it. If everyone around you is telling you that you're not valuable, what do you believe? The girls themselves buy into that belief, and they believe that they are not valuable. Uh, last Friday, I was watching a video of a mother in Rwanda who was interviewed, in it, and she was asked, would you have any interest in playing football? And she said, no, I am too old for that. My life has taken a different course. I, I can't can't possibly consider something like that. And the interviewer pressed on. She said, well, what specifically is, is keeping you from playing football? And again, she replied, I, I just, you know, I spend all day long looking for food for my children. I'm just too old and my life is different. And the interviewer said, well, what about your husband? You know, doesn't he help? And what, is, what would he think about you playing football? And she said, my husband left me several years ago. Uh, I'm alone and I just, I just have to take care of my children. I have to find food for them. That's all I do all day. So finally, I'm watching this interview and at the end, uh, the interviewer says, so how old are you? And her answer, I'm 21 years old. 21 years old. And she had already identified herself as a mother in poverty with no hopes or prospects for a better life. Now, what would have happened if the world had invested in her six to seven years earlier? How different would her life be today? 
How different would her children's lives be? This is the missing opportunity. Now multiply that by 600 million girls in the developing world, and what we have in front of us is the opportunity to change the course of humanity. But unfortunately, the world is missing out on this tremendous opportunity for change. Today, less than two cents out of every international development dollar is directed towards girls. 98% of funding goes elsewhere. This kind of disinvestment in girls is never going to get us to the kind of world that we want to live in. And so, shockingly, she's even undervalued by the international community. So her undervaluation has massive implications for all of us. Um, the truth of the matter is, when you think about girls and their uh, ability to break generational cycles of poverty, uh, they hold the power to either accelerate growth in the world or to perpetuate poverty. It's, it's really that simple. To us, that the smart money is to invest in girls and plan for growth. If you're not investing in girls, you're basically having a policy of planned poverty. Not very smart. So, our recommendation is let's all be smart. Let's be practical. Let's invest in girls. Let's invest in their safe transition from childhood to adulthood. Let's invest in the girl effect that is the powerful social and economic change brought about when girls have the opportunity to participate. Um, as all of our delegates know, adolescence is a really critical and narrow window of time when a lot of important decisions and life habits are formed. This is a really strategic time in a person's life to set the course of the future, not only for yourselves, but for families, for everyone. A very critical strategic window. Um, we have the opportunity to invest in that window and really have a huge ripple effect, girl effect. So, how do we make that investment? I'm going to echo a lot of what Pamela said because the solutions are, are very specific and um, really solutions we can all get after. The first thing we have to do is we have to invest in her assets. We have to invest directly in her. She is a powerful agent of change. And as our delegates know, adolescent girls are not just passive recipients of help and not able to do anything on their own. No, they're, they're smart. They uh, have an enormous potential. Give them the assets directly, the human assets, the social assets, the financial assets, and see what they can do to change the world. Dramatic changes. I'll give one example from a program that we have in India. Uh, this started as a nutrition program, but we gave the girls some human rights training, some legal literacy, uh, some health information, uh, just basic, simple things, and a social networks. Let them build their social capital by gathering as friends. Well, what these girls did with a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of empowerment is that they became incredible community activists in their community. Uh, they went far beyond what we were expecting, from the program. They started demanding things in their village. They went to the village elders and said, you know what, we're supposed to have electricity in this village. And they got electricity. The first time that that community had electricity in their village, we, we, we couldn't believe it. Um, they said, we need uh, good sanitation in our schools. We need toilets and kitchens. And they got it. And now all the students are benefiting from their efforts. Uh, they started volunteering at the government health center, uh, uh, weighing newborn babies, measuring them, uh, giving information to mothers. I mean, just incredible. And the whole community now values girls. They think that they are amazing. And when something needs to happen, they send the girls to get it done. It's pretty incredible. It was a nutrition program. Um, the second thing that needs to be done, in addition to building assets and, again, getting them directly in the hands of girls, is uh, we need to invest in creating an enabling environment for girls. And this is where we engage with gatekeepers and with the community. Um, the girls need that environment so that they can activate those assets that we give them. And uh, I'll give an example from a program that we have in the Amara region of Ethiopia. 
where we have funded a program that has enabled 11,000 girls to delay marriage and stay in school. And the way we started this program was we created a safe space, the girls' club, for the girls that were in school. But we noticed that the married girls, who were extremely isolated, needed support as well. So we started a married girls' club. Um, then the husband said, well, wait a second, we want a club too. So we said, okay, you guys can have a club too. So they had the husband's clubs, the married girls' clubs, and then within those families, they had a, a much better dynamic. And then we had a community engage in the dialogue. And the dialogue started with an ex exploration of child marriage. What did it do for the girls? What did it do for the community? Wow, there was actually a lot of damage being done. And um, that community started to change their practice. And people think, you know, these deep-seated traditional practices can never be changed. Not true. Absolutely not true. They can be changed. You just need to give girls assets, engage their community, and see the change that happens. So a really funny story is um, we, we were in this community, and uh, there were these men in the community center, and they're having this really, really heated debate. We're all arguing. What are they talking about? What are they talking about? And uh, they were arguing about, this is a place, this is a hot spot for child marriage. They were arguing about what the fine should be for families that pulled their daughters out of school and got them married young. Unbelievable. The men are arguing about this. So one, one guy said, well, we should, you know, we should charge money. And the other one said, we should put them in prison. Well, we don't have a prison. Oh, OK, forget that solution. Um, and then they, they came up with a solution, which was that they were going to ostracize that family for a month, a social penalty. That is something that we would never have come up with as a solution on our own. You know, in program design, sitting at our desks, just working with our mentees. Um, so I just shared the story as an example of the amazing power of when you engage a community and you have them really examine the life of the girl, um, uh, just how they can create really sustainable solutions. Because once the community is bought in, then that is a durable solution for girls. And uh, we're just uh, blown away by how successful this program has been and how their practices are now spreading to many other villages quite rapidly. So just in conclusion, um, I want to say that uh, you know, really simple two things to keep in mind when it comes to empowering girls. Make sure you're getting those assets directly to her. Make sure you're engaging the community to create an enabling environment for that change and then you'll be on your way to unleashing the girl effect. And I invite everyone in this room, all our delegates, all your girlfriends, all our boyfriends all over the world, everyone, to uh, join the girl effect movement. I think today is a great start with this uh, Girls 20 Summit. We've got a lot of work to do, but together, let's build the momentum and make it happen. Thank you.